yeah grow <laughs> make it grow it can be hard and you gotta keep them coming oh my oh hello hello and uh welcome uh <laughs> Recently, I read a post regarding growing your channel and how content creation and how we grow isn't the same as it once was. So content creation is ever changing along with those who create content. That's us. So what are the best ways to grow our channel and build ourselves into recognizable creators in the online world? Hello, I'm Sly. And today I'm joined by Fofmit. Hi. And Jammy. <laughs> And Hi. you can find us all on Twitch and YouTube doing exactly what we're going to be talking about today, which is content creation. How are you guys? Good, good. Happy like we no forever. longer have internet technical issues. That's true. <laughs> it's It's been a long time since we've been all together like this. It yeah, has, yeah. actually. Right? So yeah. long that, look, we, Jamie and I have new models that aren't here. <laughs> <laughs> that aren't here and i am still the same N ever unchanging ever unaging just stunning stunningly I'm slow timeless. and behind <laughs> timeless Ooh, i'll call myself timeless from now on uh <laughs> but that, yes they hello call me i'm timeless <laughs> timeless like as... my bones <laughs> they're made of titanium yeah because uh yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. So old. Mm -hmm. I'm hip to the beat with my new hips. <laughs> How many times have those been replaced? Oh, my doctor said I'm too active with my hips. <laughs> no comment. Today, we're talking about growing our channels and content creation, not specifically us, but in general, like as a content creator, growing your channel. So we have we have some experience now. Disclaimer alert: we are not experts. Yeah. No. Yes. We're we're all pretty <laughs> small streamers and content creators yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like we're not obviously here to you know sit here and tell everyone you gotta do it our way. But these are just some like things that I guess like we could talk about, discuss. Yeah. We we've, maybe... we've grown from yeah. the. The zero viewers to significant viewers in the tens yeah. or hundreds. Mm. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's like a very good milestone to hit. Yeah. I feel like there's there, there's a few milestones to hit, right? Like there's like the 10, there's like the 30, there's the 50, 70. there's the 75 and the 70. But then it just kind of turns yeah. into a giant steep mountain like you're in Ashoka Geki no Soma. Yeah, pretty much. Is it a uh, food mountain? <laughs> a food mountain. Excellent. It's a food mountain with a hidden mountain that's known as the dislike button. It's hidden Oof. now. Mm. Oof. Didn't they bring it back? No. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. It's still there technically, but you can't see it. Yeah, Only there's the creators no, like, can you, see it. You can only see, like, it says like and dislike right it's, it's, and there's no it's hidden like like my tears on the inside when i look like at the amount account. is hidden oh. that's so strange like you would expect the numbers to be there. like that that to me is just that's just silly but i want to talk about when we all started content creation because we all started at different times and we've all grown at different ways we've all kind of like it, it, a lot of things are different for each of us as content creators so i know we've touched on this before but when did you guys begin your journey? Not how, but when? I yeah, began um, in 2019. Right. I think the same as Sly. Mm -hmm. And I started on Twitch. And then I was like, I need to grow my Twitch. How do I do that? And everyone's like, make YouTube content. So I was like, I started making YouTube content. And I got moderately lucky with some of my content going viral minorly viral and that helped grow my youtube channel which helped grow my basically everything else um for me i guess it depends like for what because i've been cosplaying for a long time right mm. long long time and like back in the day you would make like a cosplay facebook page instagram that sort of thing mm. right i was never like super like active on my pages but i did have them 
Yeah, the, I remember it's like it's quite hard to grow like uh, cosplay pages because I remember having one way back in the day too. And like even mm. reaching, it's not just other, like you hand out cards when you go to conventions and stuff like that. But yeah, content creation comes in all forms, right? Not just online in, you know, Twitch and YouTube and whatnot, but yeah, cosplay stuff too. When did you start Twitch stuff? Twitch, I think I started... I want to say 2018, I think I started my account, but then I only, like, I streamed, like, once, and then I streamed once again, like, months later. It, it wasn't like, oh, I'm starting Twitch to stream all the time now. Like, it was just like, I made an account, and I did one or two streams in that I year, and then... streams. <laughs> <laughs> and they were IRL and very different. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Just make, <laughs> casually making cosplay... Yeah. Yep. Making boots. Painting shoes. I remember yeah, the boots. Making the boots. <laughs> yeah. The boots. <laughs> yeah. So many boots. Yeah. I think like I started the same time as Fofo. We started 2019 as a hobby. Like I wasn't, I was busy doing other things like working a bunch and like I had other stuff that I was doing at the same time. So I wasn't really like dedicated to Twitch. I would stream I don't know, like twice a week. And sometimes it'd be like, you know, on this day or this day or whatever time I was available, I was like, eh, I don't feel like doing it today, so I won't do it. But I think it was like when I started to have like a very consistent schedule was a little like quite a bit later. Um, but yeah, what what is content creation? Videos, pictures, audio, painting, any kind of art. Any kind of thing that's produced for consumption, whether it's view for your ears, eyes, or mouth. Mm. <laughs> um. Oh. In our world, we kind of like we have some specific platforms that we make content on, though, right? Like when we think of where you're gonna find online content creation for, I would say the big names. Where are we gonna look? Like what are you? What do you think are the most represented content creation platforms? YouTube, TikTok, TikTok, yeah, TikTok is yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, there's yeah, <laughs> TikTok, uh, TikTok, YouTube. I guess like Twitter is kind of a thing for a lot of uh, a lot of people as well. Getting like their name out on Twitter. I know there's quite a big following of artists and like even we see with a lot of like the new. Uh, VTuber groups and stuff on Twitter. The general make content on Twitter. Yeah, I, I find a lot of people are very binary on their positions on Twitter. Like some people are just, or, or I, there's some people in between. But a lot of people love it. A lot of people hate it. But a problem is a lot of people that love it are also like, I love, I love drama, <sighs> and that's the reason why some people hate it. Mm. Yeah, there's I a feel lot like of Twitter has a purpose. Yes. But the overall, like, oh, if you're only using Twitter, I don't think you're going to have much growth. You Correct. Know? Yeah. It's only, once again, it's only one platform, right? Mm -hmm. And for, I would say Twitch as well, as much as we see a lot of things happening with Twitch, you know, people moving from one platform to another, Twitch is still another large platform for content creation. It's, it's, I would say in terms of the streaming, like streaming platforms, it is the streaming platform at this moment. Would you agree with that? For the moment, yes. For the moment, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes at this moment in time, yes. It does seem as though December YouTube 20th. Is, is creeping onto that market yeah. a little bit, but at the moment, it's not there yet. I guess another big one is Facebook or uh -huh. yeah, Facebook gaming right now. That's another big thing people are getting into or are into. I, I don't really know much about Facebook gaming, to be honest with you. I have the feeling Facebook is going to be like one of those sleepers that everyone's going to meme on and joke on. It's going to be terrible then, until one day it's good. Like we make content like I know Fofa makes content on YouTube, on Twitch. Jam, you do a lot of stuff on TikTok. You you just had like a, a pretty recent video that went like huge, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I would. Uh, the thing is, it's like the videos I've been putting on TikTok recently, right. specifically the one that blew up. 
it's it's like goofy. Is but it's not yeah. like oh here's some quality art by Jam. It was like no here's a goofy Animal Gremlin Crossing yeah. <laughs> trashy meme that blew up on my TikTok. I think that's what makes things <laughs> blow up. It's like something that's entertaining and good. And, mm-hmm. you know, we'll draw in the masses, right? And Animal Crossing is really big right now. So I think, you know, that's kind of yeah. <laughs> it's like got, got people coming for that. And that's, it, it was funny. It was a very, it was very Form funny. Formula wise, I did the, the right things that you need to do on TikTok for a video to. Yeah. Boom. Boom, boom. Right. Boom, 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 boom. So the thing I was reading recently was about content creation and how it's no longer what it used to be. And you can no longer just grow through, you know, making content. There has to be more. And I'm not necessarily sure what like what people imply by this. But from what I took there, I mean, we know there's a lot more to content creation than just streaming on one platform. But as a content creator, we pay attention to things that help us learn how we are growing and how we need to grow. So in this case, I mean like the tools that we can use to monitor like channel growth or statistics. Like you said, there's a formula for TikTok that you were that you pay attention to, Jim, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, algorithms are important. Right. And they change and there's, you know, exceptions and stuff. But knowing them is very helpful. And do you think that there's an algorithm for every single content creation platform that we use? Um, I would say there's an In algorithm for everything but Twitch. You mm. don't think there's an algorithm for Twitch? Well, Twitch's algorithm is how many viewers do you have? Sort sort by most viewers. It's not really controllable on Twitch. Yeah, right. Uh, whereas other platforms like... Like you can basically put it this way. You can do all the right things on Twitch... Yeah. And have zero success. Right. But like, let's say on Twitch, like, like, I don't know, one of the big top five streamers see you and then they like mention you or raid you, then you're like, you're set up. Right. Whereas right. on everywhere else, like YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, all you got to do is just, there's a certain way to do it. Either by following trends or using like what other people are doing. Mm. And consistency, Meaning, consistency, Ooh. all of that just Ooh. works. It eventually will pay off. <laughs> yeah, in some way, you're. I mean, you may never be the biggest like creator ever, mm. but like it will give you, it will push you, it will push you. You know, right? Every step, um, every little tiny step counts. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and it's not just like so for things like for us growing our channels. There's a lot of things that we can pay attention to in terms of t- statistics that will help us kind of guide where we need to go. Do you guys use any of those? Um, like, for example, like our Twitch metrics, those are out there. We can see how we grow. We can see where we are maybe not doing so well. There's, what's that other one? Scully Gnome? Scully That's Gnome, another one. Scully Gnome. Yeah. Um, and I, Twitch Tracker. Scully Gnome and Twitch Tracker, right. How do you think that these help us grow our channels? Do you uh, think that t- they help us at all? To, to be honest, um, I don't think that I think Twitch metrics as a whole is not it's only important up to a certain point. Like right. and then once you break break, it's so easy to break that barrier. Basically, it's, it's basically only important until you hit partner and then heading that partner barrier. And then once you hit partner, like it be, all the information there is like essentially old news because the only way you can grow beyond that is either breaking into the upper echelon of other streamers to collab with. Right. Or making content on other platforms to bring people in from off platform. Cause like, if you compare like the, the metrics from like YouTube to Twitch or even from like Facebook (laughs) to Twitch, it's basically like, Twitch's metrics is like comparable to that kid that got hit on the head really hard and just drools in class all the time. Whereas like YouTube is like that 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 kid that uh, always puts up their hand and goes, oh, 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 I know the answer. And they know the answer. I think that, yes, I understand where you're coming from, but I do believe that the Twitch metrics, even after hitting partner, have some merit because you can see 
on your Twitch metrics where your views are coming from. Are they coming from direct or are they coming from off platform? And I think that's another important thing to look at. It's not just, you're not just looking at numbers. You're not just looking at growth, but you are looking at, okay, where are my views coming from? Where are they clicking from? What tags are, am I using that are drawing people in on Twitch? And yes, I know like we we're going to talk about like moving off to other platforms as well, Fofo. We are going to get there because I think that is super important because um, growing on Twitch, yes, is there is no, like you guys said, there's no, <laughs> there's no algorithm. It just, it, it is what it is. You know, you either have, yeah, either you know, grow or you don't. And it's, it's kind of, it's very challenging to think that way, but that is, if you are only on Twitch, yeah, we'll talk about it. But I do think there is merit in looking at and monitoring your metrics, whether it be on Sully Gnome, whether it be on Twitch metrics, whether it be on um, Twitch tracker, whatever. I think there is some merit to looking at those numbers, even past partner, because you can see which games are bringing in the viewers. You can see where, you know, you may, maybe your times that you're streaming at, maybe those times aren't great times to be streaming. Maybe if you are to adjust, like adjust your schedule, what times are my viewers coming in? What time is best? Where are my viewers coming from around the world? So what time zone suits those people? Mm. I think we need to pay attention to all of those things in order to realize, okay, one, how can I, you know, hop on this whole thing? If my viewers are all in the UK, what time zone do I need to be? Like, what is the time zone or what is the time that I should be streaming to capitalize on that? I know that sounds really, maybe that sounds bad, but you do want, like you're, if you're growing as a content creator, you want to capitalize on these things. So knowing the best time for your viewers, knowing where they are in the world, knowing what games are, you know, are bringing people in, knowing what, uh, like, what tags you're using, if they're helpful or not. Because if you realize, if you look at your tags, there, you can see how many, like, what percentage of viewers are clicking in based on those tags, right? Yeah, I think, I think so. I think... Yeah, especially even like the games thing, like maybe that you're you're consistently streaming this one game, but your community doesn't really have an interest in, then you can look at those things mm. on a tracking website, right? And see what's better performing. Yeah, and I think Twitch has that too, where you can like search the game and then you see how many viewers are viewing. So like if you have like filters, like English filter, for example, right? How many viewers are watching this game? Right. I, I don't I don't think that's good to to try to pick a game that's popular because that's not what I'm saying at all. No, 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 no. That's not yeah, what no, I'm no, saying. No, no, no. I was no. going to say like, not don't pick a game that's oversaturated, obviously. Yeah, we're going to talk about that, too. Like it's game. Games are very challenging when yeah. you stream on Twitch and you only stream games. It's very challenging. I think we, we've talked about this in a previous video, but if you are a variety streamer who streams a variety of games, it is going to be a very slow and challenging growth. And I think, Fofa, you told me that when I started, too, that you said yeah. it's going to be challenging. Unless you for... like, only stream one game, then people right. are like, eventually will come in. But like, right. if you keep switching games, you're going to have less people sticking around. Right. But the people that do stick around are sticking around because they like you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's <laughs> content creation in general is a challenging <laughs> thing. It's just it's just challenging all around. No matter what you do, gaming or not, it's going to be challenging. And I think uh, it's more challenging for some than it is for others. Do you have any ideas why you think it may be challenging for others? It's basically a second job that you have to put full time commitment into, but mm -hmm. it doesn't make any money until it makes money yeah so it's like it's but the problem is like it falls into this like weird sunk cost we are like you spend so much time into this and like right. what do you what do you do right and i i think it's it's difficult because like you don't know what it's going to be successful like jammy said like they had this one meme that that popped off from Animal Crossing, right? And it's great that it's done well, but like, there's no way they could have predicted that, right? And so, yeah. so like, how do you how do you know? There's no like, 
this is how you be successful. This is like, this is how you could be successful. Hopefully. There's like a luck factor to it. I think it also helps. And I know you, we have talked about this a lot, Fofa, before, because this is something that we, we like to discuss. But one thing about growing as a content creator, if you're, I think in your expression, putting all of your eggs in one basket, you are not going to grow as you hope to grow, right? Well, it de it depends. Um, it's not always a good idea to put all your eggs in one basket, but like some people just don't have the energy to put everything out all at once. So like focusing on one platform to begin with, and then once that grows, then branching out as soon as possible is definitely a good way to do it. But like, it's also the, like the riskiest way to do it. Cause like, imagine you blow up on TikTok, which doesn't make a lot of money. And then before you could branch out to other platforms, TikTok just <laughs> gone. It's a labor of love. <laughs> you have to love it. And you also, I don't know, you have to come to terms with a lot of things. It's good to set goals and uh don't beat yourself up too much mm. right real set realistic goals yes don't we, be we like, talked about this the I'm smart goals num I'm not numbers be... goals smart goals yeah don't be mm. like i i'm gonna get 10 million subs like and be mm. next mr beast oh ho, ho, i'm Let's so good go. <laughs> and then like do you know what i mean no, you said those you're going to upset realistic yourself. Realistic goals. We talked about this in the burnout video. We talked about we what did. smart goals were. And that's exactly what it is. You know, measurable, achievable goals. And they can be short-term goals. They can be long-term goals. But yeah, setting personal goals is like the best way. Like you upload know, to get a video started. once a week. Increase. Right. Uh, and then next one is like, like, I don't know, something like increase viewership by 10% by the end of the month. Something like that. Mm. Stick to a consistent schedule. Mm. Jam. <laughs> Jammy. <laughs> Jammy. That's like, I, like <laughs> one of my goals it's right now is to It's hard to do when you're working, you know? It is hard. I know. That's yeah. what she said. Oh, it's God. real hard. So one of my goals right now is to upload two TikTok videos a week. So before I was like doing like once a month because I was like, eh. But mm -hmm. I'm trying to upload, whether it be a clip or whether it be something else, at least two a week. Yeah. And I know that's mm -hmm. very little. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I know people do it like five times a day. And I'm like, I do not know. From what I heard before, it's the, the it's best to upload every day, mm. ideally twice a day. But... Yeah, that's it's wild. The thing is, you can uh, make like uh, it's easier when you're doing IRL stuff because what I used to yes. do with TikTok is I used to have like a day, like a Sunday, where I get into cosplay. I would record so many TikToks, like I'd have them planned out in drafts. Right. There's like a way you can do that. I spent on your phone, it's a lot easier. Um, and then I would just record for like a couple hours, and then I'd have like a couple rows i wouldn't have enough for like two a day but like one a day maybe for the week kind of thing yeah it's hard yeah, like it's hard. It's and to, <laughs> to be creative enough to come up with like your own unique spin on something and as a mm -hmm. vtuber i'm like oh this is so hard <laughs> like i want to do this trend but i'm not irl you know and trends come and go on tiktok real quick like, too within yeah. a day by the time you hop mm -hmm. on the one you'll be like oh it's gone yeah and everyone's yeah, like, ha ha, boomer. Boomer. Ha ha ha. Hello, my fellow children. <laughs> what is up? Dank memes. Yeah. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And it, like, Jamie's saying, like, you know, upload two a day every day. And while you're trying to make content on other platforms, you're streaming for however long. Yeah. And you're trying to do all this. We talked about this in the last video, but one thing that makes you know, content creation and growth challenging is that burnout. It is that mental taxation. It is that time and effort you have to put into it. Come that just video right there. Where we talk about it with our gun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Speaking yeah, you're of right. burnout, please check Speaking. out our video about burnout with special guest, the art gun. Wow. Wow. But that's, that's the truth, right? Burnout and mental taxation kind of lead to this whole entire challenge, a whole nother level of challenge in terms of content creation. And you know, that's not just 
you know, mental burnout, but that's also creativity burnout too. And I'm sure like at we're you two are very creative people. So um, maybe there's sometimes you feel like that creative burnout. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yes I, and no. Yeah. <laughs> too much drawing my like, hand. Sometimes it's like you have too many ideas, but you don't have a way to apply them nicely and you get annoyed right. if they don't work out the way you want. Oh, my life. You know? My life. Yeah. My life. Yeah. And, you're, and then you get frustrated and you're like, never mind. This was a terrible yeah, idea. Garbage. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, or, or too ambitious. It's like, uh, right. I'm going to do this project that is going to require my whole next year. And that it's going to be great. Fofa. <laughs> It's like that is Popa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My life. <laughs> I just want I have so many things, so many ideas. Yeah. Same. I, I just want I just want I just want to be Jeff Bezos and I want and to have clone my low underpaid employee that I overwork <laughs> to do all the stuff for me. <sighs> Make them pee in a oh. bottle. <laughs> what? Who's peeing in bottles? What the hell? Amazon employees, obviously. Is there anything else that you guys think leads to challenges in terms of content creation? Like, I know all of us have a very, we're very driven and ambitious people. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that everyone has what it takes to be a content creator? No. Why not? So there's like a a mutual friend that um, we all, well, Sly and I have. And and Jamie, you might know this person, but we're not going to say name names. Okay. But uh, they have the personality, they have the charisma, yeah. They have the drive of content creation. They they one hundred percent could make it as a content creator, but the problem is, is that they're they have they're a very delicate flower. Mm. He is a very delicate flower. So like, if someone were to comment on any of his like appearance, it like how he looks or. Um, like basically say you're dumb, which happens a lot online. People just like mm. like to hide behind the the barrier of being anonymous by saying awful things. Mm. This one particular person would not take those well, and it right. could really, really destroy them, like as a person, like not in, in like their self worth and self esteem. So, mm-hmm. like as much as I think they could make an amazing content creator, right? I feel that the toxicity of just dealing with anonymous people who are just there to hate people, um, it makes them not cut out for it. And I think that also comes down to whether or not you let people kind of, like you said, he, yes, he is a very delicate person. Now, I'm not saying that delicate people can't grow, is it? Like, that's not what you're saying. Right? No. You're not saying that. Yeah. It is. It it's takes a lot we of. Know and how they yeah. react to any anything. Like, uh, like if you say something like, um, what would be an example that's like very like minor, but like they take it really to heart? Oh, your head's very shiny. Yeah. And then like they'll, they'll remember <laughs> that for like the rest Forever. of their life. Mm. Yeah. And something as simple as that. Mm. I think it has a lot to do with your ability to treat it like, you know, to take take what people give you and what is that saying? Water off a duck's back? Mm. You know, just let it just let it wash wash mm. off kind of thing. Or you take it to heart and you let that impact how your content creation goes, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. And I think that comes down to one, yes, self-confidence. You don't need to be the most self-confident person in the world to be a content creator. Absolutely not. Correct. It's not going to stop you from growing if you are, you know, it, it, content creation can help you build confidence mm-hmm. for God's sake, right? It can. It has a lot to do with the ability to persist beyond the, you know, insults or the boundaries or, uh, you know, to go beyond what people say or like the hardships that you face when you were trying to grow your content and to be persistent. I think that's what it really comes down to. Is that like, do you agree with that? Yes, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. like I'm I'm sitting here trying to think, I'm like, how can you move past that? You don't have to be a self-confident person to have a successful channel. 
I think like, you know, somehow removing yourself like from from that and like realizing that those people of that though are not right? they're not um i don't know how to like say it, but like i like so when that happens to me yeah i just compartmentalize it like yes it hurts when someone's like says something nasty but mm. at the same time like i put it i, I put it away into a little box and then so eventually are, I'll throw it out later. You have the ability to do that. I know I am not like that. If somebody says something negative to me, most of the time, one, and you'll see this often in my streams, I try to educate them on why they're being a dick. And two, <laughs> uh, usually I talk about it afterwards and I'll like, I'll, I'll think about it a lot. I'll overthink it. But most of the time, unless like I'm, close to the person i won't feel offended by what they say you know what i mean oh yeah for like for example like if someone is like says something mean and right. i try like you try to reason with them and they just like are keep going along the same path then it instantly in my head it flips a switch i'm like oh they're just a moron <laughs> so i'm just like you go in the moron you go in the moron yeah. compartment in my head so like there. it doesn't impact me as you much go, you i guess go over there <laughs> you go over there now but like but yeah 100 percent. like if someone that i look up to i guess this is where the phrase like don't never meet your heroes right right um someone that i look up to or something comes in my, like comes in and does the same thing like 100 percent, that would probably tear me down yeah that's that's what i'm saying right but like i feel like for someone to move beyond that, regardless of who the person is that comes to attack them, I think that's kind of one challenge that a lot of people face. Are you able to move past what the internet is going to throw at you? Because let's be real, the internet is not the kindest of yeah. places, And right? I know it's like a quick mm -hmm. way to grow your channel by like diving headfirst into the cesspool that is drama and hate. But yeah. I, I think that if you grow your, whatever you grow your channel on, that's what your channel is going to be the foundation of it. So if right. you grow your channel on drama and hate, then that's You're your entire people. content, yeah. right? So like you have to choose what you want things to grow on, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. what your foundation is, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Good foundation it means good content. Might be slower to grow, but yep. you'll grow eventually, right. hopefully. And yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I feel like um, you can't, how you choose to build your channel, if you just want quick, you know, quick, quick growth, but no, what do you want to call it? Uh, sustenance? Is that the right word? You know what I mean? Like, there's no, there's no filling. Mm -hmm. You got all the crust, but you got no filling. You know? You're going to have a channel that may grow, but it's not going to be able to s sustain itself. Yeah. Right? And, like, building your content on drama is, like, <sighs> such a, a lake of thin ice. Because, mm -hmm. like, I've seen mm -hmm. so many drama channels that, like, that spike up and then, like, that all of a sudden they get torn down by the drama, right? Because someone's like, yo, that's not cool. And then that drama cool. becomes them. You, and then you become drama. Oh, God. <laughs> it was you all along. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely, um, I feel like, yeah, that's a huge thing. So, in, in general, with regardless if you are, you know, not the most confident person, regardless if you're trying to build on one channel, um, I think what are some of your best tips for growing a channel based on what we know, based on what we've experienced, or even based on what you've seen from other people? What are some important things that you guys would say go alongside building a channel? Setting, making a list, setting short term and achievable goals and long-term mm -hmm. goals and it's okay right. to have that pie in the sky goal as long as you yeah. like 
you know, realize that it's a pie in the sky goal. Like pie in the sky. <laughs> like why? why? <laughs> what? Such a fofamit goal, a, isn't it? Yeah, a pie. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to like. I'm trying to like setting personal goals. Obviously, I feel like that's something we're going to be talking about probably in a later video about upcoming goals, especially with the new year, you know, in the horizon. Hello, hello, 2022. We see you. Ah! <laughs> I wonder if it's uh, going to be come talking out before about 2022. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Happy New Year. Happy maybe. New year. Happy maybe. New Year, maybe. Ish. Um, yeah, setting personal goals. I'm a, I'm a big person for setting goals. I try my best to set goals, but we'll be talking about goals a later time. I think we talked. Yeah. 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 Um, Consistency. Thing, oh, my God. Yeah. I always say that. Do as I say, not as I do. Mm. So tell us about consistency, Jamie. What exactly does that mean? It means having a set schedule for either content releases. Like, you could release a, a video maybe once every two weeks or once a week or something like that. Or you can stream consistently at the same time, um, same days. Uh, it's a good thing, because when I stopped doing that, I saw the opposite of growth. <laughs> it inverted. Uh, your growth inverted. Yes. My growth inverted mm -hmm, when I couldn't be consistent anymore. Mm. If a doctor tells you that, though, that's good. <laughs> my, my, my mole growth inverted. Oh, my gosh. Now I, I don't have a mole. You can find ways to make your channel unique too, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm like a little iffy on that because like I feel like a lot of times people spend so much time on overlays and alerts. Like it's great to have like the, all the flash, but you need to like mm. make sure that the substance, like, you have the sustenance, every, yeah. the, the, the filling, the every, pies filling. Everything else needs to be there. Yes. But here's the thing, mm. like, yes, you want to make sure that, like, you know, it's not just about having unique overlays. It's not just about having a unique persona or a unique model. There are other things that make a channel unique, right? Mm -hmm. Like, That's for, especially true with VTubing, right? Yeah, because there's so mm -hmm. many of us out there. So what makes, and here's a question, this is actually, this is one of my things, um, Fofa talking about being unique because this is the area that I feel I struggle the most. This is where my most of my goals are sitting is in creating a unique, un a unique place for people to be that's different than other VTubers. Because as someone who only games, like it's that is the heart game. of my channel. It's only why you game. have to, why be, you have mad? to be mad. <laughs> well, it's everyone games. Everyone can play a game. But what makes my channel more desirable than the next one? That when they watch you, they can smell you. Actually, considering you're behind me, it's uh, your ass that they're smelling. <laughs> wow. Yeah, <laughs> get right, Bobo. <laughs> Don't come for me, homie. Don't come for me. <laughs> but for real, like, I want to know how you can make your channel unique. And so it's not just overlays, because to be honest, I don't think that is the only thing that's going to make your channel grow. And I think a lot of people believe the more money they put into overlays, models, lore videos, whatever, that is going to create a growth on their channel. But that's not the only thing that's going to help you grow. It could be it could be something that can make your channel like more clickable for sure, but maybe not to stick around is the thing. Right. I feel like yeah. I feel like I'm guilty of that where I'm like, "Ooh, pretty model, pretty stuff. Click follow and then I never watch them again." I'm sorry. Uh, you know? Yeah. It's, it's there, there has to be something that draws you. One, yes, you want it to be visually appealing. But at the same time, what is going to make you stick Engaging around? Engaging content. Right. Whether that be the conversation that you're having, whether you have unique conversation or a personality that draws people in, whether or not you're, you know, like, if are you super energetic? Are you quiet, calm, cool, collected? You know, like it. In cyberpunk, whatever. I shoot people in the pee pee. <laughs> 
That's all I do. I don't go for headshots, even though and, uh, I have a perk that gives me 50% critical in headshots. Oh I just aim for the PP. Every time. Man or woman, PP shots. Oh my goodness. As I'm... <laughs> it's, it's real. It's good. Okay. Okay, PP. yes, I'm sure people PP watch you explode. want to watch you shoot people in the PP. Like actually are Oh my gosh. But I feel like it's a smaller target. <sighs> For PP shot stream. Okay, that sounds bad. PP shot stream. You were just saying it out loud. PP shot stream. Oh god. That's terrible. <laughs> I Jamie, think there created? are a lot of things that help improve, like, a quality of a stream. And I don't think it's mm -hmm. necessarily just having nice overlays or having, you know, the best art alerts or anything like that. Those are nice to have things, but not necessary, like, mandatory things. I don't know. Right? I, I always compare it, like, this way. I always look... just. Basically put it this way, look at the largest, one of the largest content creators on Twitch, XQC, mm -hmm. and right. like, what kind of fancy alerts or artwork does he have? Nothing. He just has like <laughs> a Walmart just... camera and a yep. Walmart microphone, and he just sits in front of the camera going, dude, dude. <laughs> but people like him for his personality, and I think that's the most important mm. thing. Like, mm -hmm. it's nice to have the other things, as Sly was saying. Yeah. But, those like, those additional. other things, the nice-to-have things, do not make up for the most important thing in any content creation, is which is the personality. Who right. the person is. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Unless you're, like, I, you know, super skilled, and, like, your skill is, like, hoggers. Unless your content is, like, that skilled thing, you know? Yes, yeah, right. Like, like you're a professional esports streamer who's, like, right. amazing at shooting peepees all the time. Mm -hmm. Or you're doing, like, really cool creative crafting streams, and that's the, that's the draw, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think that is, like, you have to, once again, the content that you're putting out is going to garner what kind of audience you want to have, right? And what kind of audience you're going to have. And... Depending on, like, we are not just content creators, but we're also viewers. So, like, what do we want to watch, you mm -hmm. know? And maybe that kind of helps you decide how you how you choose to make your channel. I think right. another thing, too, is that I don't think is talked about maybe as much as, like, going off the uh, don't put your eggs in one basket, but also don't cast your net too wide. You right. can't please everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You're, That's you're not meant said. to please everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we're back baby we're back <laughs> let's go <laughs> but that's the thing you're not going to please everybody that's no. you have a 100 <laughs> percent. you're not you're not meant to please everybody yeah right so there i know for vtubers specifically there's either the people who take on a persona or there's people who are themselves I think right? we're going to see a shift of people just being themselves because being a character so. is just exhausting, especially for yeah. live streaming. But I mean, some of the bigger groups in particular, like if you look at a lot of like the VTuber groups, a lot of them have like lore or personalities that they mm -hmm. try to reenact on stream in order to garner, yes, a certain type of audience that wants that fantasy realized on stream. Right? Did that make sense without being too? You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Maybe I know Fofa. Maybe not. <laughs> you don't watch a lot of the VTuber groups. No. I know. I. I, know. I don't watch a lot of Twitch. I try to. Yeah. But. I don't. Yeah. I did get Turbo I though. Because is this, Twitch is, is this become now, a is this now an ad for for Twitch Turbo? Get your Twitch tur Turbo. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of ads. Yeah, so Ooh. many. But I think yeah, like Jamie has. Er, you guys had a point. Fofa had a point. Jamie had a point in terms of like when you make content. You know the people that you're. It's not this giant net of I need to make sure everybody likes me. 
it's not going to work out. Yeah, pe- not you. It's just like real life, right? Not mm-hmm. everyone's going to like you. Mm-hmm. And, and the you thing is, too, it? is like a lot of mm-hmm. people are going to come in. That, like, for example, if you like are streaming a game that's story driven, and like you're like no spoilers in your chat rules, it's your tag. You might even have it in your title. People are going to come in like completely not like oblivious to all of those things and be like oh did you know that this part happens in the story so cool and you're like or i love that's a spoiler and they're like i didn't know or i thought you'd played this game before oh it literally says first time play first playthrough (laughs) like Mm, oh did you know that you could press w to go forward Ah uh, yes, yes I did. Thank you. Please refer to our video on trolls on uh, Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> but like, for yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I think one of the biggest things to grow content is and to make your channel something special is to offer the people who are coming to your channel channel something of value. Whether that's, I think. That has to do with you as the content creator. You are a content creator, not just someone who's going to sit there, you know, not engaging your audience in some way or another. But what do you mean? Right? People people watching my stream, just gazing upon my beauty is enough content for them to enjoy. <sighs> what value, what value is in that? Like what, 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 what my <laughs> <why>? beauty? <laughs> Your community is very important and growing yeah. a community is very important. I feel like people forget that, mm-hmm. you know, it's not just about, you know, sitting there looking pretty on your throne of whatever. You have a community that you are trying to offer them something that's going to keep them coming back to your channel. Yes, keep them Why coming. Why do people want to come back? This is like the... <laughs> Worst episode ever. Bo, you gotta stop. You gotta stop. I'm just repeating what you said. Keep growing your channel, it gets hard and, grow. and keeps them coming. Yeah, grow, make it grow. It can be hard. And you gotta keep them coming. Oh my. Oh. Just like what Jamie said. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't with you guys. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Cyrus, please make that the trailer. So this this thing this thing that I read um this this uh this post that I read that kind of you know sparked this conversation about growing your content. Um, as somebody I know like you guys I know Jamie plays some games on stream. You've kind of started getting into that a lot now, Fofa as well with like cyberpunk and like whether it be Rust or Minecraft. But people suggest playing games without many broadcasters. Um, And as someone who does this, I will say if you play a game with like dead games, as I'm going to call them, because there's like nobody watching them on Twitch, they also don't garnish uh, viewers. But like Jamie mentioned this earlier, busy games or as we like to call them oversaturated games also don't garner viewership, right? Yeah. So you need to have like if you want to make a game succeed like a game that you're playing succeed in terms of viewership wise like right. you already need to have a community behind you right like you can't be like a nobody like you can't be like a new streamer streaming a brand new game and then like that no one's ever heard of or played or interested in and then hope that people are going to come to check that out right because you're the only person in that category Unless you market it very well, like, oh, I want to market myself as somebody who does only retro gaming, so I'm going to focus on retro games that nobody's watching, but you have to promote it in a way that's going to make people want to come back. Yeah, you got to make, you got to make people come. And um, sometimes that can be really hard, but like, I think if you, uh, like I said, like you could promote it, but that requires you to have a certain size, which can also be hard. So th- that, it's, if you're it's, if you're like a reasonable yeah. size, you can promote it. You can promote it to your audience uh, and, and be like, we're going to do like this and like maybe put like your own unique twist onto whatever you're doing. Right. Right. And then like that, 
that could get people in and like because like you do see larger content creators out there that just like start streaming like a specific game like think about or a specific thing like think about pokemon card unboxing like the most boring bland thing that you can imagine and then it was started just because some large content creators are like this is cool i'm gonna promote it we're gonna be super hype about it and they started doing it and became a huge trend and like that's basically what it what it takes it's it's obviously a lot harder to do once 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 you're smaller but it is possible so i think one thing um i remember saying this a while back fofa but i think it's there's like five key things to growing a channel. And I think one way that you can like content is, is one of those things. Knowing what games to play or what kind of content to put out is going to help you. If you're playing a game that nobody knows and you're not going to, and especially if you're not like, are you don't already have a community behind you, you're going to struggle. Mm. And I know we want to play what we want to play on stream. Like as a, as somebody who loves to game, I play games that I'm interested in, right? Yeah. And but like I you, also have, you never ahead. know like what is going to be successful. Yeah. Thus we look at our metrics. Like I was saying before, you look at what is what's working, what's not working, right? Like I, I know I totally was not expecting Cyberpunk to do as well as everything else, because like. It has it has so much hate behind it, right? But all of a sudden, right. for some reason, like people are like I'm interested in cyberpunk now. I'm like, I've always liked it. People are like, should I come back and buy it? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> well, I'm not the best person to ask about this because I've always had a good experience in cyberpunk. <laughs> mm. I think as I I look a lot at the numbers and not like con- like channel numbers, but numbers in terms of games that i'm playing and if people are going to or if people are playing it or are watching it but then again i already have an established community but when i was first starting out i was playing a game that no one was playing right Mm. and i knew that that was going to be a challenge however i also knew that the game i was playing so i was playing dragon age inquisition Mm. right but i knew that dragon age has a huge fan base it does so regardless if there it so regardless if there was people who you know, didn't, you know, weren't following it or watching it or playing it on Twitch, I knew that I would be able to garner some kind of viewership based on that game, right? So within like the first couple of months, I already had like upwards of 10 viewers, not even like the first couple of months, right? But you also weren't focused on gaming when you first started your channel. You were in VR chat and you told me, yeah, you said like viewership for VR chat was completely different than viewership for games, right? Yeah. It's not the case anymore, though. Basically, if you're a VR chat streamer, but like back in the day, it was yeah. like guaranteed like 30, 40 viewers. As right. long as you like check the boxes of like, mic's good. Um, yeah. Video quality is good. Overlays right. are okay. But now it's like, it doesn't, it's not like that at all anymore. It's a dime a dozen. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Twitch metas change all the time. It, so, it, you're right. Like, so like you can utilize them like right now i'd say like there's a lot of people streaming um reaction content yes watching right. youtube videos and, and following tier lists and tier lists mm. which uh, like you could you, you could take advantage of it and do that. them but you wouldn't want to rely on that forever yeah and it also yeah like, like dmca reaction. is such an iffy Oof, yeah and you don't know what's in the content of the video yeah right you could end up having to delete your whole VOD. Mm. Yeah. You, yeah. I think you need to really plan in advance for those screen things, stuff. Right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. I think in terms of like, you know, looking at what you're choosing to do in your channel, you really have to pay attention to what is oversaturated right now. You know, am I going to be lost in because here's this is the this is what you were saying earlier, Fofa, that there is a in what Jamie was mentioning about no algorithm on Twitch, you are in a sea of of people if you are in an oversaturated game you know you are in a sea of people playing the same game what is going to make you pop out of there especially if you are starting with you know a few like not that many viewers if you're not already established you're going to be in this wave of hundreds and hundreds of people what is somebody gonna like are they gonna go searching for somebody with you know so i 
I don't really put a lot of thought into that, but thinking about since I've been recently streaming Cyberpunk yeah. and looking at other people streaming Cyberpunk, um, basically the thing is, is that like there's a lot of people who are streaming to less than 10 viewers right now on Cyberpunk. So like right. if you're anyone of like a reasonable size um, in terms of like the small content creators, like Jammy, myself, or Sly, if any mm. of us were to stream right there, we'd be like top row, which I think makes a huge difference in terms of visibility because there's Same, enough yeah. people there to um, make it people interested that you know that people are interested, but there's not so many people that like you're going to get lost in the crowd. So like, mm -hmm. like if any of us were to stream it, like, I guess we would be in the top row, which makes a huge difference on Twitch because it's sorted by viewers. But like, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know, like, you could you could play that game, but like I said, like, I didn't think about it until just now. I just went, I want to play Cyberpunk! It's fun game, okay. Mm -hmm. I, you can I, also I think... see how many people are following a game category. Right. Too, right. On Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying earlier. So it's if like, you I see, like, a high things, follower yeah. count, like, a high follower of that category and low amounts of streams and viewership, right. that's kind yeah. of, like... An, a good tell, like a good sign. If you're planning to stream that game, like, oh. You can follow categories? Yeah. yeah so if you type in a game <laughs> or something, you can follow it. If you yeah. want to get, you know, why you want that to show yeah. up in your... Well, that's how you, that's how they basically give you recommendations, mm -hmm. right? Like, I don't follow any example, categories. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I noticed yeah. too, when I streamed, uh, when I streamed Zelda what games, I usually get like quite a few new faces popping in just because they like love zelda because like right. zelda's great but should i be anyways <laughs> yeah like i'm sure a lot of i didn't check ahead of time but i'm sure a lot of people follow those game categories oh my god i don't know if i'm the, the only one to check those things because maybe it's because i've been streaming games since the beginning that i've always paid attention to that kind of stuff um i find it it's interesting to look at because, for example, here this is kind of this is funny. I've been playing We're the Witcher for the past. Today. <laughs> I, I've been playing the Witcher for a very long time. All right, mm -hmm. Witcher three for a very long time. I started it. God, it's been. We have we have a lot of hours in this game. Okay, a little too many. We've been streaming it every week, once a week for a long, long, long time, and at the time, there were maybe four or five English streamers playing the game while I was playing it, right? Mm. Mm. And when you look at that, I'm like, okay, I am there. I already have an established community, but most of the other people, like you said with Cyberpunk, it's a very similar FOFA. There's not a lot of people watching in that category. But because Witcher 2, or the Witcher season two has just come out, the people streaming Witcher 3 now has increased tenfold. No, I went to go look the other day at 7 o'clock in the morning when I normally do my streams and I see over 2K people stream, like what? watching, viewing the channel when at the time there's only the 100 in my, <laughs> in my That's chat. That's crazy. Oh, especially, right? yeah, you're right. I never yeah. thought about that. Man, I'm so small brain sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like when you want to grow your channel, it's not necessary to think about those things all the time but obviously it is, <laughs> it is interesting to look at in terms of one monitoring your statistics two being strategic about your content you know your content creation so for example jamie said you can see how many people are following it black flag yeah you know i have no idea so playing assassin's creed black flag for me i've been planning to play this for a year i looked at how many people are following the channel I looked at how many people are streaming the game. Oh I looked God. at all of these kinds of things. And I was like, hmm, this would be an interesting game to get into. And even now, my TikToks for Black Flag, they're doing better than any of my other ones. Because it's a game that a lot of people follow. It's one of the best AC games out there. Mm. So strategically choosing what games you're going to play. I want to play all the games I'm playing. <laughs> I'm not saying that like you have to choose games that are popular. Like You don't see me... I I may not be a real VTuber because I don't want to play Genshin Impact, but like <laughs> point be made. I tried um, to play Genshin Impact because I wanted I to see what it's the, a grindy, the grindy about. game. I'm in too deep. I'm in too deep. <laughs> okay, in too deep, I'm too. in too deep. I love it, but I I understand. 
It's yeah. like a lot. I can't get into it. It's a commitment. I I will say, as somebody who plays games in general, the the thing I want to say: play games that entertain you mm-hmm. first and foremost. Yeah, things games that you're interested in. But here, yeah. that's like a double edged sword, right? They, games that you're interested yeah. in, and they have a lot to talk about. So, like mm. when I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm just gonna talk about. I've been, ta- I've been, I'm so into cyberpunk right now. But like when Cyberpunk first came out and like I, I was streaming it, um, there would be a lot of times where I'd stop and I would like deep dive into the lore. So like we'd be just like stopping in front of a vending machine and I'd be like, oh my gosh, okay, so I have to talk about this thing about like the food, the food lore in in the Cyberpunk universe. And like that's what I would like, that's how into it I was. Yeah. Whereas like a game that I really but it could also be a double edged sword, because even though people like that, when I did that with Super Mario RPG, people were mm. like this game's boring and 2D. I don't like. And I'm like, but I love. It. I don't like. Goodbye. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm like. Oh. I feel like when you play games that entertain you, you are at your best because once again, the content is the value that you're providing to your audience is you. You yeah. are what people are going to keep coming back for, mm. right? So if uh-huh. you're happy and you're enjoying it. You know, that's the most important because you're at your best. But a very small percentage of people are going to come only for the games. And you said this at the beginning. You mentioned that uh, it's the kind of people you want are the people who are going to come for you rather than just, you know, the game. Yeah. The the one thing that you're doing. The community you want uh, to build are people who are going to come for like your what you're putting out. What makes you unique? But That's what they're coming for. What I'm saying is in terms of the double-edged sword, it's not like, yeah. it's not that. It's just like, you put yourself out there and you want to share something that's cool. And like, mm. like even though you're aware that that people will not want to watch because it's a certain game and you're aware of that, it's still kind of like, it hurt, like it, it stings a little is the best way to put it. Even though you mm. know like the reasons behind it, it still stings. Yeah. It's like being an ASMR streamer. You get like 700 viewers on average. Then the second you stream non-ASMR, they're like 30 viewers. Oof. Oof. Biggest, biggest Oof. Twitch, Twitch stings. Mm. I just feel like being passionate about a game or that feeling of happiness when you do something that you love, it'll bring in the people you want to be there. You know, I feel like I feel like Jam's community is like this too, but when Jamie gets really excited about something or super passionate, her whole entire community, her whole entire chat is hyped up with her. You know what I yeah. mean? You know, and I that, I think that's what makes a good channel and that's what helps you grow is when you're hyped up and your chat is hyped up. Mm. If you're passionate about something, if you love what you're doing, if you're, you know, creating art, ASMR or playing a game or, you know, working in software development or whatever you're doing on your live stream and you're loving it and having fun with it and just, you know, expressing yourself honestly or whether you're not your character, but you are showing that genuine passion for something, people are going to stick around for that, you know? Yeah. Also, too, though, like we talked about this earlier, too, but like sometimes having the right tech also helps because like you can have all of these things, but like. If mm-hmm. you don't have like a good internet connection, which is basically required to do live streaming, yeah. or um, like I, I think people can forgive a certain amount of mic quality issues Stuffness. on a live stream, mm. maybe not so much on a YouTube video, but like I think th- yeah. those things do make a difference, they and do. I think people that are looking to become content creators need to think about like what category of content they can strive in um to make to like to do what what based on what they have so like i know someone that has like really bad internet connection so bad that they can't even watch like a live stream and chat at the same time like voice chat so like their only option basically is if they want to become a content creator is like to upload stuff offline for offline content they can never become Mm. a live streamer right I think I will say I do believe that audio audio quality in a live stream and audio quality in an offline video on YouTube or offline quality is still important. I I feel like 
I just remember using like the old, my old um, VR microphone. And I remember listening to those streams and I remember that like, I'm like, oh, this doesn't sound super good. And I remember you, Fofo, even investing to get a better quality mic for streaming. And same yeah. with you, Jam. Like it was quite mm -hmm. recently you got you got a different microphone. Oh, yeah? what mic do you have Me? now, Jam? No, no, I have the same when, mic. How long ago was it? it I remember. No, no, no. Don't you have a blue I've snowball? Had, I, yeah, I have, a, I have a blue Yeti. Oh, I've Yeti. I've had a blue Yeti for like, I've had it for a long time, like longer than I've been streaming. I think. Same. I I also have a old. We have gray a blue Yeti. I, I play with the settings every so often, and then it sounds okay, a lot maybe better. It's, maybe it was that. I remember you just like we. I remember there was the one time we were talking about like fixing fixing the microphone. Mm -hmm. You were like, "Oh yeah, I have to fix this because you kept cutting in and out, cutting in and out." Uh, I it, remember. It could also be. Uh, um, you can fix things that aren't your equipment too, like uh, right. putting down. I put down a sleeping bag because there was echo, and I think it helped a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah Before yeah. I bought a rug, because I was like, I'm gonna buy a rug, but if it, that's not the problem, I don't want to buy a rug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's not just, but I feel like our quality of content, like quality of our stuff, the quality of mm. everything, it's not just the equipment. You can have, you know. A cheap, you said XQC has a cheap camera, has a cheap yeah. microphone. Working you know, with what you have. Yeah, but I'll making the best of it through, you know, whether yeah. it be. Also know, watch your streams because yeah. you could be keep streaming and streaming and streaming over and over again and not even know that you have like a whole bunch of problems going on. And oh then you gosh. watch your stream and you're like, oh my God, this is, how long has this been happening? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I, you know, you can't. You wouldn't believe how often I've had the conversation of like, you should monitor your audio. And like, what do you mean monitor your audio? Yeah. And like, there's so many people who just don't monitor their audio. And I just, I can't believe it. I, I and it is it. nice. Like sometimes chat is nice enough to tell you things are going on, but they're not always going to tell you that those no. things are going on or those things, the little things that are only something noticeable to you, but maybe not like direct, like glaringly yeah. not obvious to other people, but or people just tolerate it, you yes, know, exactly. people are just tolerate it. Exactly. And, yeah. It's yeah. like, I feel like to succeed at growth, we have to be aware of all things at all times. Mm -hmm. You know, your quality mm -hmm. after the stream, during the stream, post-production, whatever. We need to be aware of it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. You're on all the time trying to figure out, you know, how you can make it better. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so hard. Um, I I have a question to kind of like move past. I have I have a question. I I read we were talking about how Twitter there's a lot of you know Twitter drama and stuff and I I kind of I enjoy reading it a lot of the times because it sparks a lot of questions. One of the things that people talk about is whether or not you need to have high energy to be a content creator. A lot of people say they don't think that you know if you t you're too high energy you're not a good content creator if you're too low energy you're not a good content creator so people argue for one or the other or they you know like people will say well you uh, too high energy oh no like you need to be chill calm cool you know relaxed i want to chill what do you guys feel about that how do you feel i think so, it just a time and a place for both yeah i agree do you feel like yeah do you feel like there has to do you think that people have to be one or the other do you think people can be both i think people can should be just both. do yeah do what they want do what you want to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if you don't if you don't want to watch somebody who's high energy you really don't have to watch somebody I who's think, high um, energy right i actually there was a a vtuber alignment chart recently that i posted to my discord and oh. they said i'm a true neutral and one of those sides was hyper and chill and I, I could see, I like, there's some games where I'm just like, ah, but then other times when I'm just doing art that I'm just like, okay, we're just, we're just chatting just and chatting, we're listening to relaxing music and we're just hanging out and it's just, just vibing. We're just, and then people are like, oh, I, I fell asleep. It was so relaxing. I'm like, okay, <laughs> go to sleep. Yeah. I, I completely, I completely agree with you guys that like both have their merits. And I feel like people can be both. 
-hmm. You know, I I know what kind of content creator I am. I know what kind of content creator. Like Fofa can be very chill, but can also be very loud and passionate. Uh, and I feel like Jan, no. you're exactly the same way. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> y'all. No. Yeah. I'm I never like, loud. No. <laughs> I feel like both types bring in different kinds of people. And whether, you know, one day you might be chill and those people I've I had have had people come in and be like, How come you're so loud? And I'm like, and that's that just the existence just of slime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is like uh, hello, is I am a very volume? loud person. Is this volume? No. It can be louder. But for real. <laughs> like, I don't know. It it's just I feel like hype hype chat or low, you know, chill chat, both are of value. And I feel they both offer something in the content creation world. Yes. Mm, very much so. Now, I will so, say positive is better than negative. Unless you're yeah. like a rager streamer, because sometimes that can be like entertaining. But I'd imagine it's really hard to like keep up that that life, that negative gremlin screaming at breaking your keyboard and and then I you have, foster a community of trolls. Uh -oh. oh god. Oh god, that sounds like my chat. <laughs> no, like I, I watch trolls. I like watching I like I'm I'm a minute. I like watching T one and he gets his is really entertaining and he gets so mad. You can still but his hear me. chat says good. Okay. Oh sorry. Sorry, sorry. So what? good. I, I was banging on the desk to demonstrate. And oh, then, no, okay. I couldn't even hear the desk banging. <laughs> we didn't even hear it. So, Cyrus added some desk smashing sounds. Dang it. Maybe add, wait, with can, how, I wonder how far we can ask Cyrus. Cyrus, zoom in on my hand and 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 add some Italian music when I go ba ba da boopie. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord. Sorry Cyrus. I'll stop. That's okay. I just I feel like we we can talk so much about growing our channels and people how to grow channels, but it's all very different and difficult for everyone regardless of you know you know how big you are or where you're sitting in terms of numbers and whatnot uh the person who originally made the post that kind of like inspired a lot of these thoughts they mentioned that just streaming will not grow your content correct mm -hmm. right you guys agree with that yeah yeah I feel like it's so much more, once again, not all your eggs in one basket, but it has a lot to do with building yourself outside of just streaming, right? Yeah. You can't just turn it on and let's go. There's a lot more that goes into it in terms of that, you know, uniqueness to your channel, that value that you're offering, the games that you play or the things you talk about or the entertainment you're offering, the, you know content you're putting out the quality it goes mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. what is what is your top tip for growing your channel top tip make content on other platforms suited to those platforms specifically what does that mean suited to the platform what do you mean tell me more it means that don't like be like oh i have my you twitch vod I'm going to upload to YouTube. Mm. Everyone watch my <laughs> Twitch VOD. That's, yeah. You, you have gotta to make, like, build a, you, more than just that. Yeah. yeah, you did a great job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I get that. That makes sense. And Jam, what is your, what's your tip? What do you feel? Ooh, my top tip. <laughs> just the tip. I'm going to say B. Huh? <laughs> I was going to say... Mm, be consistent maybe I get because I feel like yeah. that one has suspected me the most and I'm just like mm, that consistency that consistency yeah yeah I think have consistency mm -hmm. I think that's a huge thing consistency absolutely a nice regular it rhythm mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh I missed that one here we go again here we go again oh gosh um, what about you I, gonna, I say probably um monitoring uh your metrics not necessarily your numbers but your time zones your 
you know, stream lengths and everything that impacts building your content. If you are looking to only build on Twitch at the moment because you don't have time to do other things, which I can understand in some people, but look at those metrics. And even on YouTube metrics, you can see, you know, what thumbnails do better, what style does better. What time what, people watch your videos. Yes. What, who am I, who is watching my videos? Where are they coming from? So what videos are they watching previously? What other videos mm, your mm, people watch after mm. you? Blah, blah, blah. What other channels do they watch? Things like that. Exactly. The, the, Click through rates, etc. Yeah. YouTube is Pay a wealth attention of knowledge. To those metrics. Yes. Knowledge. You, knowledge. I'll, now, knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> is what brings us together. <laughs> but for real, uh, monitoring your metrics. I think that's, it, it is crucial, it is important. And I think that if you choose to ignore your metrics, you're ignoring something, a very important tool to help you grow. So I think that, you know, um, there's a lot of people who have a lot of resources that can help you grow your channel. If you're interested in learning more about how to grow your channel, uh, check out videos by, you know, Harris Heller has some great stuff about building a YouTube channel. Devin Nash. Devin Nash, huge, yeah. Um, I'd say, but yeah, check out, if you want to know more, you know, provide some, we got some resources, and video links, et cetera. And of course, uh, you know, uh, we'll uh, see you next time. <laughs> Thanks guys for time. joining us. Bye. See you, see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Click like and subscribe.